Welcome everyone, join us today as we pay tribute to Jan Kienemann, the trailblazing founder and lead guitarist of the all-female rock band Vixen. So let's dive in. Jan Kienemann born Janice Lynn Kienemann on November 18, 1953 in St. Paul, Minnesota, in the United States of America. She was Zodiac sign Scorpio. Jan was born and raised in St. Paul, Minnesota, to parents Carl and Betty, with her brother Ron. Growing up in a musical family where everyone played an instrument except her father, Jan initially took organ lessons as a young girl. Her father once bought a guitar for himself but soon decided it wasn't for him, so Jan picked it up and instantly fell in love with it. She and her friend Nancy Palumbo learned to play the guitar together, with one of their first performances at her grandmother's nursing home. Inspired by her brother's friend's band and their neighborhood gigs, Jan had the idea to form her own all-female band. Despite the scarcity of female role models in the 1970s music scene, Jan drew inspiration from bands like Heart and Led Zeppelin. Aware of the lack of women in rock, she was determined to carve out her own path, knowing the challenges she would face. In 1971, she formed the band Genesis, originally named Lemon Pepper, with singer Nancy Shanks and drummers Marlene Peterson and Laurie Hedlund. They practiced in garages and basements, using their parents' homes as rehearsal spaces, with her father Carl acting as a roadie in the early days. The band later changed its name to Vixen to avoid confusion with the British band Genesis, before disbanding in 1974. Six years later, Jan revived Vixen with a new lineup and decided to take the band to new heights by relocating from Minnesota to Los Angeles in 1980. Driven by a strong sense of purpose and a clear vision of success, she knew there was no turning back. Despite the initial culture shock of moving to a bustling city, the sight of the iconic Hollywood sign served as a powerful reminder that she was now a part of a bigger story. Jan began scouting local clubs, after a few lineup changes, seeking out talented women to join her in her all-female rock band. With the newly handpicked members, the new Vixen was ready to make its mark. The band, featuring vocalist Janet Gardner, bassist Cher Pedersen, and drummer Roxy Petrucci, became a powerful unit under Jan's leadership. They faced initial skepticism from record companies, who were reluctant to sign an all-female rock band. Despite being told to replace the musicians with male counterparts or focus solely on singing, the group remained steadfast in their commitment to their original vision. Jan continued to push for recognition, determined to find the right manager who could help them succeed. After going through several management options, they finally connected with Alan Kovach of Left Bank Management Incorporated in LA, who had worked with Richard Marks. Kovach believed in their potential and promised to secure them a record deal. Despite the challenges, his persistence paid off, and Vixen was signed to EMI Records, finally on the path to releasing their debut album. In September 1988, Vixen released their self-titled debut album, a project that marked a significant milestone for the band. The process of creating the album was challenging, involving tight deadlines and a great deal of pressure. The band was navigating the complexities of the music industry for the first time, working closely with high-profile producers who pushed them to deliver their best performance. Despite the intense environment and the demands placed on them, Vixen embraced the opportunity to prove themselves. Their debut album produced several hit singles, thanks to the skilled production and arrangements of Richard Marks, Rick Nayer, David Cole, and Spencer Proffer. However, as the album neared completion, the record label felt it was missing a standout track that would fully capture the essence of Vixen's sound. The song, Edge of a Broken Heart, written by Richard Marks and Fee Waybill of The Tubes, provided exactly what was needed. The band quickly recorded the track, which met with immediate approval from the label, who believed it perfectly encapsulated their musical identity. Following its success, receiving great MTV coverage and reaching 26th position in the US charts, the single, Crying was released, which went to number 22, further cementing Vixen's rising status in the rock scene. The band toured extensively with notable acts such as The Scorpions, Ozzy Osbourne, and Bon Jovi. They also made an appearance in Penelope Spheris' 1988 film, The Decline of Western Civilization Part II, The Metal Years, although only members Janet Gardner, Cher Pedersen, and Roxy Petrucci featured in the film. In 1989, Vixen performed at the Milton Keynes Festival, sharing the stage with Bon Jovi, Skid Row, and Europe. Following their successful tours, the band returned to the studio to work on their second album, Rev It Up. Released in July 1990, the album reached number 20 on the UK charts and peaked at number 52 in the US, a lower position than their label EMI had hoped for. The singles, How Much Love, Love Is A Killer, and Not A Minute Too Soon, became staples of their live performances and were featured in the music video compilation Revved Up. 
Their subsequent tours included headlining concerts, an acoustic set for MTV, and opening slots for major acts like Kiss and Deep Purple. However, after completing a European tour with Deep Purple in April 1991, the band decided to split due to musical differences, management challenges, and declining record sales, which led to them being dropped by their label. Vixen disbanded in 1991 but reunited in 1997 without Jan. During this time, Jan was involved in a side project called Drawing Down the Moon, where she played guitar alongside Jackie Paulson, Stacey Robinson, Donna Eveland, Donna Rawlins, and Christine Peria. The group released a studio album titled Angel in My Dream. Meanwhile, Vixen was reformed by drummer Roxy Petrucci with Janet Gardner on lead vocals and rhythm guitar, and Gina Style taking over Jan's position on lead guitar. When Jan discovered that the other members had excluded her and used the band's name without her permission, she took legal action and won the rights to the Vixen name for copyright infringement. Before this, the reformed Vixen had toured and released the album Tangerine in 1998 under CMC International, showcasing a grungier sound that was a departure from the band's original style. In 2001, Jan reformed Vixen with a lineup featuring herself, Janet Gardner, Roxy Petrucci, and new bassist Pat Holloway. This group embarked on the Voices of Metal tour across the US. However, the reunion was short-lived as disagreements with management led to the band splitting up halfway through the tour, leaving Jan as the sole remaining member. To complete the tour, she quickly brought in Jenna Sands Aguero, Lynn Louise Lowry, and Catherine Kraft. In 2006, Vixen released two new albums, a live album titled Extended Versions, recorded during a performance in Sweden, and a studio album called Live and Learn. In 2004, VH1 reached out to the four members of Vixen's classic lineup to feature them on the show, Bands Reunited. The episode was filmed in August and aired in the US in November of that year. Following the broadcast, Capital, EMI's American label, reissued Vixen's first two albums, Vixen and Rev It Up. Vixen also won the sixth annual Independent Music Awards Vox Pop Vote for Best Hard Rock, Metal Song with, I Try. In a 2011 interview, frontwoman Jenna Sands Aguero announced that a second album featuring the 2001 Vixen lineup was in progress. She also mentioned a track titled, I Understand, and other new recordings and outtakes from Live and Learn are included. By the end of 2012, Jan was preparing to reunite the classic Vixen lineup with Janet Gardner, Cher Ross, and Roxy Petrucci. However, just days before the official reunion announcement in January 2013, Jan was diagnosed with cancer. This diagnosis led to the postponement of the announcement until Jan could potentially recover and be declared cancer-free. Tragically, on October 10, 2013, after a nine-month battle with cancer, likely ovarian but not officially confirmed, Jan passed away at the age of 59. And there you have it. Thank you for joining us in remembering Jan Keenerman, a true pioneer in rock music. Her talent, spirit, and influence continue to inspire musicians and fans around the world. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more stories on the lives and legacies of rock's greatest icons. Take care and bye for now.